this extract is from the chapter titled The Man I Killed from the novel The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. In this extract, Tim O'Brien, who is a soldier in Vietnam, is talking about the body and the, the life of a man that he supposedly killed. And Kiowa, who's his comrade and fellow soldier, and who's a peace-loving, anti-war kind of person, is uh, trying to console him and trying to rationalize O'Brien's actions. So the main theme of this extract is the ambiguous morality of war. However, there are some sub-themes such as shame as motivation and the power of storytelling. So I think it's first off important to note that the story that O'Brien's telling of how he's killed this man is actually not true. It never happened. O'Brien is an unreliable narrator and he reveals that in the chapter titled Good Form, O'Brien tells us that this never happened, he never killed anyone. He never killed this man at least. And O'Brien kind of hints that this is all fake because where Kiowa is talking, um, he, he when he speaks, it's in quotation marks um, to show that these are actually Kiowa's words. But O'Brien's talking... O'Brien's not talking, it's a third-person point of view. And what that does is it distances O'Brien himself from this extract, uh, from what he's saying, and um, it uh, distances himself from the reality and the consequences of his actions. And also the, the, the major effect of this third-person point of view is that we can only infer what O'Brien truly feels. Right at in line thirty one, Kiowa says, "Okay, maybe I don't know," referring to how O'Brien actually feels, and that is the same reaction that is evoked from the audience. We don't know how O'Brien truly feels about this boy's death because O'Brien doesn't reveal it to us. Right? O'Brien might feel proud. O'Brien might feel sad or angry or frustrated, but we don't know, and that further conveys the theme of the ambiguous morality of war. So, looking at line 7 to 29 where O'Brien's describing the this boy or the soldier I should say um O'Brien he he gives this um long uh, imagery about this boy and he, he he uses quite ironic diction when describing him first off this soldier is dead but O'Brien talks about how the butterfly was making its way along the young man's forehead and his nose was undamaged and his right cheek was smooth and fine-grained and he's delicately boned and he uses a simile when he says his eyebrows were thin and arched like a woman's so he's describing the boy as as beautiful even though he's dead right and and in this story he's telling which is a motif in the things they carried storytelling is a motif and this entire story he's telling it 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 almost parallels that of o'brien's like for example, um, the the extract talks about how the man didn't want to fight. O'Brien didn't want to fight. He went all the way to the Canadian border and turned back due to shame. This boy also only fights due to shame, and that conveys the theme of shame as motivation, which is a sub-theme in this extract. Um, so it, we see this symbolism between this boy and O'Brien in, uh, in their life story almost, and what what's ironic is that um storytelling right the, the theme of the power of storytelling is often conveyed in things they carried because characters such as Mitchell Sanders and Tim O'Brien they use storytelling as an outlet to save them from mental anguish they they tell stories to to cope with the traumatic experiences that they've gone through in this war and when O'Brien's telling the story, this is his way of, of relieving himself from all the, the horrendous things he's seen in this war. And as O'Brien tells us in the chapter Good Form, O'Brien did not kill this man. O'Brien simply saw this man. But still, O'Brien acts as if he's killed this man because... And he, and he makes up this story about how this man was good at math and was in his prime and didn't want to go to war but went to war due to shame because he, he mirrors this man's life with his story because for him, killing himself mentally almost is a way of, 
of comforting himself which uh, which again shows this the, this use of symbolism and imagery and ironic diction and the irony shows that this ambiguous morality we can't tell whether o'brien is actually sad about seeing this dead boy or whether we see that it's comforting him because o'brien deep down knows that only the dead truly leave the war right we see characters such as norman bowker who, who struggle with life well beyond the, the end of the Vietnam War. But O'Brien, looking at this boy, he's describing him as beautiful to show that death is the only relief from this war, right? O'Brien doesn't want to be here in the first place. He believes this war is futile, but for him, death is the only way to leave. And this boy's death um, is, is almost comforting for him. He uses this to cope with um, his tra with the traumatic experiences that he's gone through, which is why he tells it in the form of a story, because that shows kind of the sub-theme of the importance of storytelling, because storytelling acts as an outlet for Tim O'Brien, right? And Tim O'Brien celebrates the dead by remembering them living, such as uh, Linda. Towards the end of the book, O'Brien describes how uh, he, he uses this story to bring Linda to life and how other dead characters such as Ted Lavender or Kurt Lemon, he, they're brought to life through storytelling. And O'Brien is bringing this boy to life through this story. Because for O'Brien, seeing this man whose story symbolizes that of his own comforts him because O'Brien knows that death is the only true way to leave this war. Now to move away from O'Brien's story and to put this passage into the context of the entire chapter, this passage is actually part of a juxtaposition between um, the beauty of this soldier and the gruesomeness of the soldier. This extract talks about the soldier's beauty and great life. However, previously in this same chapter, the boy is described as being very gruesome because he's he's been killed. And this conflict shows the ambiguity of morality in war because O'Brien can't make up his mind whether this boy is beautiful and served the great cause and is free from the shackles of war or whether he's just a dead uh, corpse that's rotting now which again this ambiguity of whether this death is good or bad just to conclude o'brien uses this uses third person point of view to hide his true feelings about this death and then uses the motif of storytelling to give this boy's uh, this give this man's story and in this story, he uses such ironic diction and uh, imagery, and he uses this man as uh, a symbol of his own life, and this man's life parallels that of his own. But because this man's dead, it's ironic that O'Brien sees himself as dead mentally, because for O'Brien, killing himself is almost comforting because he knows that the dead only leave the war, and that he celebrates the dead by remembering them living and how this shows the ambiguity of war because even though this man is dead, he might still be uh, better off than those still at war.